And that's how we transition to the Patriots. The New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Chargers. The LA Chargers playing at SoFi Stadium. The Patriots won 27-24 on the road. There, there are certain teams that are just unpredictable, that just seem to perplex me all the time. And, and every year, it's there are always those teams that you can't quite wrap your, your head around. You can't quite comprehend how they're doing what they're doing. It's kind of like, or, or even whether it's good or bad, you don't really understand how things are unfolding for these teams. They're like the, the, the Raiders from last year who started 6-3, and three, and then they all of a sudden fell off the face of the earth and they dropped their final seven games, two of five during that stretch. And they missed the playoffs. They finished as a 500 team. And the New England Patriots are kind of just like this Rubik's Cube. They're really just an enigma of a team. One week you see one performance. The next week you see a different performance. But here's what we know. What we know is that with any Rubik's Cube, it's solvable. There are answers. There are explanations. And when I think about the New England Patriots, as much as I have a difficult time comprehending how they've been doing, how they've been winning these games, how they're 4-4 four and four right now in the AFC, there's actually a fairly easy explanation. The Patriots are not a bad football team. People have been trying to convince me the whole year that the New England Patriots offense stinks, that they're not a good football team, that they're just beating the bad teams, that they're losing to all the good teams. But the reality is, right now, if you look at the Patriots, they're kind of perfectly on schedule. Because let's be objective about this. Let's take a look at their schedule. Let's be objective about this. Their first loss came to Miami in week number one. They lost 17-16. to 16. Well, week one ostensibly acted as like a third preseason game for most teams. We saw the Packers get blown out by the Saints on the road. And so they've now rattled off seven straight wins. So I don't think it says too much about week one. People were surprised that the Bills lost to the Steelers. They've gone on to win five of their next six games. So the, you don't want to glean too much or overreact too much to week one. So that was kind of an anomaly. They lost by one. Then you look, they lost at the Saints. They lost to the Saints. Well, the Saints just beat the they beat the back the Packers in, in week one, and now they just beat the Bucks. So, is that really a, a terrible loss? Not so much. They lost to the Bucks because of a missed field goal in inclement weather, nineteen to seventeen. They hold Tom Brady in the defending champ Buccaneers to nineteen points on the road, a team that has a vastly better roster than the Patriots, and yet it's two point two point game. Then they lose to the Cowboys at home in overtime, a game they could have easily won, probably should have easily won that contest. They blow it in overtime, but the Cowboys are 6-1. and one. They're probably a top-five team in the NFL. So that's not really a terrible loss. The teams that they were supposed to beat, the, the Jets twice and the Texans, they took care of. And then um, Chargers. And this is one of these games where classic Bill Belichick, gutsy, defensive-minded, overachieving type of win, where Bill Belichick's game plan just trumps that of his adversary, of his opponent. And he puts a another young, promising quarterback for a, for a long ride. I mean, defensively, he just had he just had Justin Herbert flummoxed a little bit. And that's kind of been the, the consistent theme every time he goes up against a younger quarterback, is he kind of finds ways to make life the most difficult possible for the opposing quarterback. And so I mean, Justin Herbert did not have a, a good game yesterday, barely completed 50% of his passes through two picks. But that's the thing is you look at this at this outcome and the Patriots had fewer total yards. They had fewer drives, fewer yards per play, fewer rushing yards. And even with all of that, 
when it came to the strategy and the game plan and the defensive discipline components to the football game, where well, that's where they had the advantage. Fewer penalties, fewer turnovers, better third down efficiency. Again, Herbert barely completed 50% of his passes through, uh, through two picks, was sacked three times. And then, this is the key stat here. Better clock management. The Patriots held the ball for 11 more minutes than the Chargers did. Like 35 minutes to 24 minutes on the road. So when you've got all the kind of ancillary components in your favor and your advantage, well, you're going to win that football game. And again, the Chargers are a really good football team. Let's not get it twisted. The Chargers are a really good football team. And for the Patriots to do what they did, it's just a classic Bill Belichick game because he put Mac Jones in positions to consistently thrive. He didn't have him push the ball deep. He had him just completing higher percentage passes, shorter intermediate throws. But that's his system. That's what works for him. He doesn't need Mac Jones to try and push the ball down the field 60 yards. That's not their style of offense. So he created, he curated a game plan perfectly suited for Mac Jones' strength. And on the flip side, created a defensive game plan that absolutely stifled Herbert and Brandon Staley, who I really like, because the Patriots had no business beating this Chargers team. They shouldn't beat this Chargers team. You look on paper, there's no reason why the Patriots should be beating this L.A. Chargers team. But they did. And it's kind of inexplainable, but at the same time, there is a simple explanation. And that's the fact that the Patriots are not a bad football team. I said at the beginning of the year, when they made all these offseason acquisitions for Jonu Smith, for Hunter Henry, for Nelson Aguilar, for Kendrick Bourne, for Matt Judon, for Darius Slayton. The list goes on and on of the offseason acquisitions that they made. That, by hook or by crook, this Patriots team may just make the playoffs. And I think we're starting to see that might be the case for the Pittsburgh Steelers, potentially, too. Now that the Browns are kind of faltering and the health of Baker Mayfield, no one knows about that. So I don't know if the Browns are a shoe-in anymore to make the postseason. The Patriots... Yes, they've got an absolute gauntlet remaining of a schedule. But it's entirely plausible that they could make the playoffs. And one of the things that has been consistent about the Patriots throughout the years is their secondary, their defensive backs are always sensational. Now, I'm not going to make the claim that Adrian Phillips is the next fantastic safety to come along. I'm not going to make that claim. He's not even on the level of Jamal Adams. But Adrian Phillips, again, the former Charger, two interceptions against his former team. And what we've known about the Patriots is they've always consistently had some of the best defensive backs in the league. Rodney Harrison, of course, fantastic, fantastic Patriot. Ty Law has been a part of this team. Darrell Revis had a brief stint. Stephon Gilmore. Malcolm Butler, of course, had the, the game-winning interception. Mike Haynes, throwback to him from the 1970s. This team has always had elite defensive backs. And again, I'm not grouping Adrian Phillips as part of that esteemed group, more so just to highlight that that's an area of strength for them all the time. That's where they end up kind of having the advantage in almost every single matchup that they have. And so, again, this iteration of the Patriots shouldn't be beating this Chargers team, but they do because of Bill Belichick's game plan. He just finds a way to do it. And the next three games are all winnable games. Next three games are all winnable games for them. They could easily be 7-4 and four heading into the home stretch. And it's possible that if they can find a way to get to 10 wins, and be 10 and 7, they might have an outside shot at making the wild card game. They're certainly not done with a win like this today. Keep keeps those playoff hopes alive. It certainly does.